Winter of Terror. Avalanche is buried 45,000 people for a time in Switzerland, Austria, and Italy. Desert Rock Exercises, which was the first testing for nuclear war. The top three songs on the Billboard 100. At number three, How High to the Moon by Les Paul and Mary Ford. Number two, Because of You by Tony Bennett. Percy Faith, and at the number one spot was Too Young by Nat King Cole, Les Baxter. The year is 1951, and this top of the line Oldsmobile 98 Deluxe could be had at your local Oldsmobile dealer. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that covers the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars or car brands that are no longer around. Brands like Packard, Studebaker, Nash, AMC, Hudson, Cord, Detroit Electric, Rockney, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Hupmobile, among many, many others. Engine episodes on Wednesdays. We dive in deep on the history, button switches and knobs, specs, and but most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Some good news, this 1951 Oldsmobile 98 Deluxe is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over 900 cars for sale. When recording this episode, financing and shipping are available. Anybody can peruse their inventory for more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car. Be sure to click the link below after this show. 1951 Oldsmobile was offered in three wheelbase lengths. Riding the wheelbase of 119 and a half inches was the 88, sometimes referred to as Rocket 88. Super 88 was in the middle, riding a wheelbase of 120 inches, and at the top was the 98, riding the longest wheelbase, 122 inches. Oldsmobile offered the 98 from 1941 to 1996 in 12 generations. 1951 falls in the third generation, which was produced from 1948 until 1953. Designed by Duke, 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 Harley Earl, and built on GM's C-body platform. 1951 Oldsmobile 98 could be had as a two-door convertible, two-door coupe, or four-door sedan. It's important to note that the four-door sedan and two-door convertible only came in deluxe trim, whereas the coupe could be had as standard or deluxe trim. Standard trim got you the bumper guard, cigarette lighter, dome light, Rubberized floor mats, stainless steel moldings, lined trunk, illuminated ashtray, foam rubber seat cushions. The deluxe package gave you all of that, plus special rear door ornament, rear center armrest, electric clock, steering wheel with horn ring, the deluxe version. Upholstery options included nylon cord or nylon cloth and leather. 1951 is more or less a carryover body design from 1950, so we're going to go back to 1949 for today's comparison. But before we do, so let's compare all of the different trims. 88 on top, Super 88 in the center, 98 on the bottom. All of these cars not only have different trim, but they also have different shells. All three have totally different rear quarter sections. The Rocket 88 is the only one with round front fenders. The Super is a cross between, and the 98 is very rectangular with rounded corners. The 88 and the Super 88 look to have different taillights with short add-on fins, nothing drastic. The 98 has more body lines sculpted into the body itself. All right, for the main attraction, 1949 on top, 1951 on the bottom, starting in the front. At first glance, the bodies are completely different. The 51 has more of a low-slung appearance to it. Two-piece windshield on the 49 versus single on the 51. Oldsmobile badges on the nose are completely different. Headlights, grills, bumpers, all different. Moving to the side profile, round front wheel wells on the 49 versus more rectangular on the 51. The 51 has way more trim than the 49. While looking at the side, look at the roof line. Just look at how different these two body designs are. 
Moving to the rear, single piece rear window on the 49 versus three piece on the 51. The trunk slopes way more on the 49. Tail lights are mounted, or I should say located at the bottom on the 49 versus at the top on the 51. Bumpers, Oldsmobile logo, 49 has an external trunk handle that the 51 does not have. Moving inside to take a gander at the dashboard, which are very similar, but with that said, the horn buttons are different. The 51 has more vertical texture bars on the dashboard itself. Which one do you like better? Let's talk specs, 208 inches long, 60.8 inches wide, a rides a wheelbase of 122 inches, it weighs, 3,970 pounds, price $2,640, which is equivalent to you spending $31,252.42 in year 2023. Total 1951 Oldsmobile production was 285,615 units, of which total 98 production was 100,519 units. And of that number, 78,122 were the four-door sedan variety. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 303 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve V8, 5 liters. It's good for 135 horsepower at 3,600 RPM, 263 pound-feet, or 357 newton meters at 1,800 RPM, with a bore of 3.8 inches, stroke of 3.4 inches, compression is 7.5 to 1, 5 main bearings, wind backed with a 4-speed automatic transmission, 0 to 60, could be had in 16.3 seconds. Theoretical top speed of 91 miles per hour while achieving an average 11.8 miles to the gallon. It's Oldsmobile's newest and greatest, the sensational new Oldsmobile Rocket 98, America's most glamorous car, the new 98 for 51. New in appearance, even more beautiful, more luxurious. Superb new styling dramatically displayed in the magnificent new holiday sedan for 1951. Styling that's distinctively Oldsmobile. And there's more that's new. A new chassis for a softer, safer ride. More room for greater comfort. New Oldsmobile Hydromatic, smoother than ever. Even the famous rocket engine is new. More than ever, the high compression leader. New beauty, chassis, Hydromatic, rocket engine. All in the magnificent new Oldsmobile 98 to give you the most thrilling ride you've ever tried. Stop, look, listen, stop, look, listen, stop, look, listen to the engine. Can't hear a thing. Stop, look, listen, just a purr. Barely hear it. The only engine better than the 50 Rocket Sun is the great new rocket engine for 1951. For 1951, got that flashing rocket engine power. We'd like you to know you can step out and go so now. We're shouting. Greatest engine in the world. Oh, there's none to compare any place, anywhere. Such power, rocket engine economy. Rocket engine, such power, such economy. Such power, such economy, such power, such economy. Let's talk styling. Let's start with the Oldsmobile emblem, which looks absolutely incredible with the world and this coming through it. Oldsmobile above it curved this is one of my favorite eras of oldsmobile with the droopy headlights and they just look incredible in person all of these textured lines i always thought that this was just empty negative space but it's actually like painted so it's like painted bright work painted bright work turn signal right at the bottom below it just an awesome design in my humble opinion and there's also a lot of bright work on this car look at the bumpers and how they kind of swoop down just a wee bit as well as these lines inside the bumper hope it's portraying on screen as well as i'm seeing it in person it's been a while since i saw one of these in person i just can't believe they're getting really hard to find check out this line in the front fascia comes up to this this also has a center line in the hood that comes off of this hood ornament and just look at this it's like a rocket this 
car also has a center line that goes back towards the windshield but notice it's a single piece windshield not a split windshield but we'll get that when we get kind of getting ahead of ourselves we'll get there when we get there look at all of the different lines and levels of the hood base of the windshield windshield wipers are at the base of the windshield not on pedestals they're suicide and or opposing wipers this thing has a really nice visor it also has these slits and if you ever wondered what these slits are for it's for the air to escape so it doesn't get trapped and rip your visor off essentially but this one isn't all the way to the um, roof line so it doesn't really need the slits but that's what the slits are for if it connects to the roof line it's for the air to escape so it doesn't rip your visor off this car does have drip rails that run the length of the car starting at the base of the windshield and they come right to there side profile of this Look at this nice piece of bright work that runs the belt line of the car. Notice it has this channel inside of it. The wheel wells are just rolled, isn't flared. This car also doesn't have trim at the bottom, but it does kind of roll underneath. So check out this little piece right here. This tiny trim piece, this tiny trim piece, and this tiny trim piece. But notice the trim piece up here is longer than this one and this one. And then look at this bit. Also look how this line tapers back into the body here. And then there's a little bit of a dip and then comes out the back this car has fender skirts also notice it's rolled check out this side spear also look at this and how it's all textured lots of different beads I really dig that this car has rain deflectors and or window shields everybody calls them something different wrap around rear window in the back notice it's three pieces The taillights are just as nice as the headlights. There's so much going on with that design. Also look at how far that protrudes. It also has this logo in the back. That's probably one of my favorite Oldsmobile logos of all time. So check out the side mirror placement how it's mounted, how it's designed. Getting inside, but before we do, just notice all the different lines in this door handle design. The door is relatively light. Just look at all of the different materials used. Armrest, as well as door handle to pull the door shut. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. It operates like this. Vent window, you just make sure it's unlocked. Has a window crank. Just take a look at this interior.
So this right here is a traffic light finder traffic light prism it's it's always good to have if you have a sun visor but with that said coming back here to what i see the sun visor isn't an issue in this car like it's it doesn't even look like it's even there you really have to look up to even see it which is awesome because if you've ever been in sun visor cars sometimes it's like wide vision it's like um for example, my 52 Chevy truck, you know it's there. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, headlights, windshield wipers, the center button that is for the wash feature, hood release, hand brake, pull out for heat control, left air vent, semicircle binnacle with coolant temperature, gasoline gauge, amp meter, and oil pressure at the top. Then you have the speedometer with odometer in center, right air vent, pull out for defrost, key, starter button, lighter, radio, deluxe electric clock, drive modes read, neutral, drive, low, reverse. Very nice place to be. This interior dashboard looks incredible. The over the hood view is incredible. Space is impeccable in here. The windshield does curve ever so slightly. Just look at the A-pillar situation. Also notice trim right here. My knees are nowhere near the dashboard. The pedals are not suspended. They come out of the they come out of the floor as opposed to the firewall. Before going on to the glove box, just check this out. Kids would probably make noises as you're driving down the road. On to the glove box test. There's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Uh, I think it will fit in there. I just don't want to lose my camera in there. Um, so we're going to say it's plausible. I'm afraid that if I put it down inside there that I won't be able to get it back out again. Front seat profile. It feels like a broadcloth material. And then it has a different material on the top. It's two different materials. Not entirely sure what this is. If you know what this is in the comment section below. It definitely feels interesting but it is rather upright and the seat does dip down a little bit in the back but it's not uncomfortable coming to the rear door door panels a lot like the front only in the back armrest door handle to get out window crank for the big window and it goes all the way down aside from this little tiny part here Just look at all of that space you have. Also notice how relatively flat the floor is. Transmission tunnel is pretty small. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio, which is really nice in here. This is what visibility looks like out the rear from the back seat. There is a nice parcel shelf there behind the rear seat. Creature comforts. There is a coat hook. There are armrests. The windows do go down. Dome light in center. Robe rail to put a heavy blanket on in the winter time because your, heating, your heater situation you have to remember these cars only had one heater and it was generally underneath the dashboard this one doesn't look like it has a heater these cars didn't have vents like modern cars so there was only one heat source and it was blowing in the front front passengers they were first class back seat passengers were second class passengers and a lot of cars there are some cars that had heaters in the back but those were more expensive cars so this was to hold a 
heavy blanket to keep warm in the winter time. There is an ashtray here as well. Seat profile. It does recline a little bit, but it also curves. So it would hold you. It feels like it's I'm being held as I sit back here. The seat bottom does dip down slightly back here, but it's wide. With that said, it is not uncomfortable. I got tons of room between my knee and the back of the seat. This is what I look like sitting in the back. I got tons, tons of headroom. Do not feel claustrophobic in this car whatsoever. This car would be an epic car if you're looking to get into the classic car hobby and you have a family. You could fit six people in this car comfortably. Hood release is inside. The secondary catch is right behind here. You see it right here? And it flips all the way up to clear this. There it is. Oldsmobile Rocket 88 V8 overhead valve engine. Interesting battery box cover here. Generator on top oil bath air cleaner windshield washer bottle there's uh the heating for there steering I don't see the um, master cylinder for the brake, so it must be in the floor. Also, the distributor's in the back. GM Hallmark there. On the positive side, these look awesome in any body style, in my personal opinion. They're big and spacious, Rocket V8 power, awesome interior, and dash against it not much but they are rust prone some trim parts may be hard to find could you imagine the cost of redoing all the stainless trim all right now it's time for would you rather two scenarios today in the first scenario would you rather have a 1951 buick or 1951 olds or 1951 pontiac i'm gonna leave this here for a minute if you need more time feel free pause the video in the second scenario would you rather have a 1951 studebaker four-door sedan or 1951 oldsmobile 98 four-door sedan or 1951 hudson hornet four-door sedan Gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything you guys bring in the comments. And until next time, toodaloo! Ba -ba baby, baby, where did our love go? Oh, don't you need me? Don't you need me no more? I've got this burning, yearning feeling inside me. Oh, deep inside me. And it hurts so bad.